All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Branch Isole, who is in Arkansas. How are you doing, Branch? Good afternoon, John. Thanks so much for having me. I've been looking forward to our time together. Absolutely. And and uh, Branch speaks about the power of choice and consequences. His contemporary short stories reveal issues and emotions often, experiences, often experienced, but not often voiced. Uh, talk radio and podcast guests, he shares how establishing balance in life work relationships builds frameworks to support per- personal career and spiritual growth. And the author of 20, 22 books. Uh, so far. So, you know, just a little bit of writing here and there, right? <laughs> you got to keep busy. Yeah, yeah. Well, for anyone, you know, having, uh, you know, written a meager two books myself, 20 is just such a daunting number. <laughs> so congratulations, 2020 plus. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is the power of choice, because I think it's such an interesting subject, uh, Branch, because I think choice is something that can paralyze us because maybe we perceive that sometimes that we have too many choices. Like if you if you put somebody in front of eight doors, they won't be able to choose one because it's just too much choice. If you put them in front of two or three, they'll choose one. So sometimes it's like perceive too many choices. Sometimes people feel that they have no choices, um, that they're they're trapped. Um, so talk to me a little bit about just the the power of choice and how actually becoming aware of the ability to make choice and why it's important to make choices. And even by not making choices, you're making choices, obviously. Um, but just talk about uh, why choice is such a is, is such a powerful force. Sure. You know, it, we don't think about it as an active thing. It's just part of our daily life. You know, we we encounter people, we encounter situations we encounter events and we respond. And, you know, a lot of times, especially in our relationships, either at home or work, we kind of get in a groove and our response can be almost automatic. And because we often go to that same place in our response, we aren't thinking about the consequence. And, And that's the real power of choice is that for every choice or decision that we make, there's an eventual consequence. And so, you know, we go through life and when we are geared for success, we're geared for, um, you know, moving forward, we're geared to tackle the world and make it our own. And we sometimes get into this, this mode or this habit of making choices without really thinking about what the possible consequences can be until after we've made that choice and we find ourselves in that hole and we start trying to dig ourselves out. And and so then we're dealing with the consequence or the fallout and we don't relate that often back to that choice that we had. And, And, you know, it's so important for people, especially in the world that we live in, to sort of when you've got that choice to make or that decision that you've got to make to stop for a moment pause and then think about what the possible outcomes might be instead of just responding you know in sort of our old pattern behavior mm-hmm. the way we normally respond and by taking that moment to think about what are my options and what are the potential consequences it it puts that power of choice back, you know, in the forefront of our mind, so that we're we're thinking about the choice, but we're also thinking about the outcome, you know. And our natural mm-hmm. instinct, especially if we're in sales or business, is to focus on the the potential positive outcome, and then we're surprised, mm-hmm. you know, by the negative right. outcome or by something that, that we didn't expect. And so that's the power of choice is thinking the whole process through rather than just going, okay, this is what I want to do and going full barrel ahead without mm-hmm. realizing that the process has two parts. 
Yeah. Um, and we're always, um, and let's face it, Brian, we're always very good at telling ourselves in that circumstance, well, I didn't really have any other choice. So that's why. And, and, that's, and, that's, n- and that's never really, really the truth. To your point is that's always a good kind of get out of jail card later when you've made a, a, a decision without or a choice without thinking it through. So how do you, how do you help people make that, you know, stop for a moment? Because I do feel like people make a lot of choices kind of an autopilot almost like you know um automatically as opposed to really thinking through them so how do you how do you help people understand that taking those couple of steps backwards or or hitting the pause button for a moment the difference that that can make well you know john you just have to think about your home relationship or your intimate relationship or your partner relationship a lot of times and when we get in that comfort zone, especially if we've been with our partner for a while, you know, you like you said, we sort of are on autopilot a lot of the time. And because our day is filled with so many different choices and options, you know, we sometimes get home and we're just spent, you know, we're exhausted mm-hmm. from the daily survival, the daily grind. And we tend to a lot of times get into that old, old, relaxed comfort zone with most important and primary relationship. And because we're in that place and we're just totally exhausted, you know, that's the relationship that can, number one, cause the most problems. And number two, because it causes problems, you know, so many people tend to put that on the back burner and and go refocus on their career Mm -hmm. or their job situation. And that's the one that, you know, really needs the attention. And so it's, it's important to, that's why that pausing, that stopping is really important. You know, when somebody, you're in a couples or a partner relationship and we get into that phase where I say something and, and you respond and, you know, I'm kind of in that same place and we go back and forth and we can get ourselves back into a hole or we get we get into an issue that we're problems with and we haven't faced it. And so many times, you know, our response can be one of, of frustration or anger or, uh, you know, a negative response. And that mm-hmm. only makes the situation more tenable. So I often say, you know, take a moment and pause, stop before you answer and say these two things to yourself don't din or you can say respond respectfully and what that mm-hmm. does is it it changes our thought focus from you know spewing back that automatic response that we have used before you know our partner has heard it before so they kind of know what to expect and by stopping and saying you know, don't demean my partner or respond respectfully. It often can make that jump one that, you know, doesn't get us back into mm-hmm. that same issue or situation where we're, we're st- you know, with a person that we should be uh, most vulnerable and most giving and most understanding with. It, it also works at, at yeah. you know, in a job situation or career mm-hmm. so, situation, but not quite because you do have a different focus. You know, if you're on a team or a project, you've got an intended result in your personal relationship. You know, that relationship is always in flux and hopefully it's always mm-hmm. growing, but we have to take time and attention to make sure that in our responses to that person, that we are responding respectfully and not trying to demean or control or overlord, you know, that just gets us into Mm -hmm. a a terrible situation. And, you know, when you're having problems at home, it affects our work as well. No, no, hundred percent. And one of the interesting things that you just said there was the, the intention part, because it's funny. I mean, sometimes you'll have people who will go, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that the way I said it, but you know what I'm like. Right. And, and I always love that one. It's like, oh, people who are late. Well, you know, I'm always late as if they have as if they have zero control over it, as if they have zero choice over it, as if it's just something that we all have to deal with because for some reason they can't do it. And I, and I think and, and there's, you know, the same in work. Sometimes it's like people will just go, oh, well, you know what I'm like, or they won't or they'll 
come off like they have that they have no ability to change anything about themselves and certainly about their circumstances that's one i always find really interesting is the intentional piece because to be intentional then you have to take ownership so you can't use your get out of jail oh well you know what i'm like yeah i when when people say that you know well i've always been this way right in a personal <laughs> relationship and i say that's the way you responded when you were dating you know, your mm -hmm. response when you were courting and, and the <laughs> yeah. job situation, it's the same thing. That's the way you responded in the interview. You know, that's how you act that first two or three months on the job. And it yep. makes people realize that, you know, they've fallen in, into that trap. They're, mm -hmm. It's sort of this air of indifference. Like, well, if you don't agree with me, you know, too bad. And that's where the relationships start to go down that hole. And, and like you say, once you get in, you know, the easiest way to avoid a hole, step around it. Don't jump in there and then start digging. So you've got to mm -hmm. think about what you're saying. And, and what's so great about that, you know, the Lord gave us a supercomputer kind of a brain, right? I read the other day that uh, the average person has 60,000 thoughts every day. Well, the interesting thing is, you can change thoughts literally instantaneous, the power of speed of thought. But mm -hmm. because we're human, we can only focus on one thought at a time. You know, I can drive my car down the street. I can have the radio on. I can, you know, be paying attention to what's going on around me. And I can be thinking about some other part of my life. Well, my focus is actually on the thought part. And so mm -hmm. when we realize that and you realize you can change your direction by merely changing your thought. And because you got that power to change your thought, you can change the outcome of your choice. And, and that's what the, the power of choice is. It's related to that power of thought. And as we focus on a singular thought, you know, our thoughts become our actions. Our actions mm -hmm. become our habits. Our habits become our character and our character determines our destiny. So when you realize that process, my destiny is directly related to the thoughts that I'm having in every situation. Right. And, and that's a, and, and what I, what I love about that is the, is the fact that that's bringing it all home to the fact that you are personally accountable and if you and i always yeah. find that that uh, that is something that i wish you know i wish i'd learned earlier but that self-awareness but the, the, the self-awareness and when you finally say yes actually i am accountable for everything i'm not it's not my particularly my fault that everything happened the way it did but i'm accountable for it i put myself in the situation or i'm i'm accountable in how i how i dealt with the situation but i think that whole personal accountability part is very very liberating and people people seem to be afraid of it sometimes but it's extremely liberating when you actually take accountability for your life you know what's interesting john in in leadership positions especially in business in the, in the world today it's so competitive the true leaders are the ones who take personal responsibility for the decision and because they are willing to take personal responsibility, they're able to grow so that they see not only the value, but strengths and weaknesses of their team members, right? Or of their employees. And mm -hmm. when they take personal responsibility and for whatever the outcome may be, the growth that's there allows them to lead by example so that their team members can then feel confident that they can take personal responsibility, you know, even if it doesn't go like they had planned by taking the responsibility for the actions, it's so much easier to find a new solution or find a better solution because they're not in the corner beating themselves up, you know, trying to make an excuse or trying to place the blame somewhere else or, gee, you know, I, I missed that deadline a dog ate my paperwork kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so true leadership, that's one of the keys of true leaders, again, especially in business, because the true leader looks at the total picture, does the best effort possible, and then takes responsibility, not only for the success, 
but for the part of the failure that can then be corrected or adjusted so that in the next situation, the chance of success is so much greater. And, and that's a great example for team members or employees. So they're not, you know, think they're going to be browbeaten or rejected or mm -hmm. they're going to be in trouble or, you know, so it's, it's um, avoidance and taking personal responsibility. You can see it every day in our world today. And, and it's so blatantly obvious. Yeah. And the people who are willing to take responsibility are the ones who people are attracted to. That's the person they want to be associated with. Yeah, no, I know 100%. And I think we've seen so many examples, um, you know, of late. And you've seen when, you know, companies and, and leaders have kind of looked for, okay, let me find a scapegoat somewhere down here around like somewhere in the yeah. middle level, yeah, fire them, but we won't actually take responsibility ourselves for anything. We'll say it was all their mistake. And, and, and we wonder why we live in a somewhat cynical world. But to your point is the what you just described and the alternative there of the leader, you know, taking responsibility and all of that, and then people feeling empowered. I mean, that's how you build a culture of innovation and success, isn't it, when people feel that way? Exactly. You know, the, the most important management position is always the mid-manager, right? Because they're the, they're the hub, they're the hinge point between all the people below them that they're responsible for mm -hmm. and all the people above them that they're responsible to. And so, you know, I, I was an assistant principal in a middle school in my past life. And that's the desk that everything falls on. I mean, you get mm -hmm. the student problems, you get the staff problems, you get the parent problems, and you get the administration problems. And because it's such a key point in the structure, in every hierarchy, especially again in business, those mid-managers are so important to the overall success and continued success and progress moving forward. Those are the people who need to have that confidence that I can take responsibility and, you know, make it work if it didn't work out exactly the way we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And and um, one one other thing I wanted to ask you is advice for people who really really struggle with making choices. Like I know some people personally who really I mean that's they really struggle. They procrastinate. They go through a lot of back and forth before um, making a decision. And and I often find feel that sometimes the ultimate decision made is no better than the decision that could have been made a lot earlier. Uh, but how? But some. But I do know that some people genuinely struggle with actually making a decision and then moving forward. Yeah, I find there's there's three points that identify or that that person in that struggle is experiencing. Number one, they've got some insecurities, you know, that are holding mm -hmm. them back. Number two, they've got some um, past baggage, some things they've brought with them, you know, out of childhood into adulthood. And those play out in fear of rejection, number one, because when we are rejected, we always take it personally, even if it's not intended to be personal. You know, mm -hmm. every salesman is rejected every sure. day, right? He hears he hears no. Well, the one who takes that personally then spends their time grappling with why they were rejected instead of, you know, understanding that it's it's not a personal situation. It's mm -hmm. something in your presentation or something, you know, in the process where the sale wasn't made. So you've got the insecurity level and you've got the rejection level. And you've got that, okay, what do I do about it level? And the, the person who can grow through that insecure place and that fear of rejection and subsequent failure is the one who can move forward. The one who's stuck in those two places of insecurities and or rejection, you know, is the one who has all the issues that seem to keep coming up. You know, you, you, it's easy to tell the producers from the non-producers. The key is why are the non-producers not producing? And and instances of, that I've the people I've dealt with in my career, it's been that insecure place or that fear of rejection place. And you've got to help them get over that. But you know that's a whole other avenue of, of <laughs> personal uh, HR. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Absolutely. Well, listen, um, the branch, this has been fantastic. All the branches information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Thanks, John. Um, I'm an author. I've written 22 books. I write about the things we've been discussing, you know, adult, contemporary adult situations. I've got a website. I've got a YouTube channel where we post lots of different things for people to read. They're all under my name. Uh, you can Google and you'll get links to everything we we're offering and, and everything we've written. Yeah, and I would highly encourage people to go there. As I said, all those links will be below um, because I think this is important work. And I think just conquer it, you know, having, having a, a process for making choices, I think, having, you know, having a process of stepping back, considering and you know, not overanalyzing, but I think having a process for making decisions, it's a thing that probably most of us, if we really analyze it, we find we don't have a solid, you know, process for making decisions. So I think absolutely worthwhile. So I encourage you to go check it out. So thank you again, Branch. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon.